Okay, is it is it on? Yeah, it's good. It's good. on? Okay, we're on. We're on. Okay. Going live. Going live. The problem we chose to look at involved two men that reported to the lab after a 12-hour fast and were given identical glasses of sugar water. However, the resulting change in blood glucose was very different between these two men. The question we seek to answer is why? Both men were the same age of 45, had the same BMI of 29, and the same waist circumference of 94 centimeters. One male exhibited with a higher blood glucose than the other after their two-hour glucose tolerance test. It also took longer for the first participant's blood glucose values to return to baseline versus the latter. For this problem, blood glucose will be our mass. Inflow is the same given both participants ingested the same amount of glucose. The outflow is characterized by the ability of the muscle to uptake glucose. This process is mediated by the ability of the individual's body to sense and respond to insulin normally. We hypothesize that the outflow for the latter participant, also known as the unhealthy insulin sensitive participant, is lower versus the healthy participant. That being said, the participant that is more insensitive is le likely less fit and has le less fat oxidation, increasing their reactive lipid species, which inhibit the insulin pathway. The mechanisms involved in the insulin pathway begin with insulin release from the pancreatic beta, beta cells in response to elevated blood glucose levels. Typically, insulin would bind to the insulin receptor, IR, which would activate IRS, which would then in turn activate P13K, which activates AKT and PKB. This inhibits AS160 through phosphorylation. This deactivation of AS160 allows for GLUT4 translocation to the membrane. The translocation is mediated by the enzyme RAC, which is also activated by P13K. This translocation occurs via actin filaments mediated by the active activity of RAC. We know this happens through the evidence provided by a study by Ron Dawa. GLUT4 translocation is what results in the glucose uptake from the blood into skeletal muscle, thereby decreasing blood glucose levels. We know that with increased insulin, we have an increased fat uptake into the muscle cell through CD36. Fat is converted into fatty acid acyl-CoA, which can then go through FA oxidation or can be turned into ceramides or DAGs, which are known as the reactive lipid species. The accumulation of these species result in the deactivation of the insulin pathway which then decreased the GLUT4 translocation and subsequently glucose uptake from blood and skeletal muscle leading to a high blood glucose. Given our hypothesis, we believe that insulin insensitive participant has a slower rate of fat oxidation, which leads to the accumulation of these reactive lipid species, such as ceramides and DAGs, which result in the inhibition of AKT and IRS respectively. In contrast, our fitter participant oxidizes fat at a faster rate, thereby decreasing the accumulation of these reactive lipid species. Because the turnover of FA oxidation is faster and results in a decreased inhibition of the insulin signaling pathways, which allows for increased GLUT4 translocation and subsequent uptake of blood glucose. Evidence from literature supports our hypothesis. A study by Goodpaster and colleagues showed that participants post-training had higher glucose disposal rates. This study also backs up our hypothesis by showing that the trained participants had higher levels of FA oxidation versus untrained participants. Given this, we can conclude that the reason that the unhealthy insulin insensitive participant had increased blood glucose levels due to decreased fatty acid oxidation 
leading to the inhibition of the insulin pathways via reactive lipid species, resulting in a decrease in GLUT4 translocation and subsequently a decrease in glucose uptake, aka RF flow.